Hi, hello and welcome. Something a bit different today. We're talking about scalar implicatures or scalar inferences, both words for the same thing. I call it something a bit different because the informational psychology focused videos on this channel are mostly more on the clinical front of things, but this subject is related more to theory and research in the psychological field. I am however quite knowledgeable about this domain because my master thesis that I have been doing for the past year and a half focuses on this phenomenon. Scalar implicatures, this is the term I will use throughout the video, but scalar inferences refers to the same thing, are phenomenons that occur in reasoning, and most of the time in linguistic reasoning, that's where they're most well known. The sentences that we will therefore use to explain the phenomenon are explained down right below me. You can say, some days it rains, that's quite a clear sentence. A lot of people will assume, yeah, yeah, that's true, some days it rains. And they will assume, some days it rains, that's true because not all days are rainy. The other sentence, some oaks are trees. That's a bit more of a difficult one, isn't it? When someone tells you that some oaks are trees, you might confront them and tell them, hey, that's not completely right because aren't all oaks trees? But that is exactly where the interesting part of this phenomenon of scalar implicatures comes into play. The second sentence is the one we're really interested in, some oaks are trees, and that's called an underinformative sentence. Bot and Novak did some really interesting research towards this topic in 2004, and they studied the phenomenon in linguistics as well. They provided a nice and coherent and short but informative definition for what scalar inferences actually are. They said that scalar inferences arise when a less than maximally informative utterance implies the denial of a more informative position. This sounds very strange, but an example will make it more clear. The word some, that's a less than maximally informative utterance. The maximally informative utterance on that scale, where some is on, is actually the word all. Saying all is more informative. Some is less informative than all, because if you say some, multiple truths can still hold. This is best explained with an example, and the explanation of this example is also crucial for all research that is related to scalar inferences or scalar implicatures. Going back to the second sentence, that one is called an underinformative sentence, so the one about some oaks being trees. These types of sentences are used in research because people can respond to those sentences in two different ways. They can either have a logical response. This is because some is logically compatible with all. Now what does that mean? Purely just in linguistic logical terms, so not how you use the word every day, but purely logical. Some can still entail all. In our example sentence, this is some and possibly all oaks are trees. To go back to the other sentence, some days it rains, a logical interpretation of some here would also be some and possibly all days it rains. However, most of the time when we talk about the word some, we are not aiming for the logical interpretation. We want the listener to interpret it in a pragmatic way, because that is more of use in our everyday communication. The pragmatic way of interpreting some is displayed below. Some but not all oaks are trees. For this specific underinformative sentence, this is wrong. Because all oaks are trees, of course. So if you hear the sentence, some oaks are trees, and you have a pragmatic mode of interpretation, you will answer false, that's not true. If the interpretation you make is, however, on a logical level, you will say, yeah, that's true. Because some means some and possibly all. Now the main gist of the story, that but not all part that is marked in that purplish blue color right there. That part right there, that's the scalar inference. That part implies the denial of the more informative position. That implies the denial of all. Because all, in this case, is the more informative position related to some. Just gonna repeat it one more time for clarity, because this is like really the, the bread and butter of what I'm talking about. This is the main topic. Some, but not all oaks are trees. That but not all part, that is the scalar implicature or the scalar inference. That is the extra inference you make that denies the more informative position. In this case, it denies the case that 
all oaks are trees, where all is the more informative position. Now there are two major schools of thought when it comes to this subject. The first one is called the neo gricean school of thought or the default theorists. They can be found on the left side of the slide. What they say is that the pragmatic interpretation of quantitative words like sum is the default and that that interpretation requires no extra effort, is not intentional but automatic. So they say that the pragmatic interpretation of sum but not all is the one that everyone makes automatically and it doesn't require any extra effort. The contextual theories and mainly relevance theory is the most important one on this front however states that the logical interpretation of quantitative words like sum is the default and requires no extra effort. The pragmatic interpretation that requires intentional extra effort. Therefore it also requires more cognitive resources. So people will make a first interpretation that is purely logical. They will firstly interpret it as some and possibly all. That's the logical way of interpreting things. If that interpretation is fine for the situation, then fine. They stop their reasoning process. But the name relevance theory implies that if the context makes it seem relevant to reason further and to add the extra scalar inference statement that they will in fact reason further and add that statement and only then when they reason further they intentionally put more effort into their reasoning process they add an inference they deplete more of their cognitive resources to do so only then will they come to the pragmatic interpretation so first of all they interpret it as some but possibly all and only when reasoning further based on contextual cues that this is relevant therefore relevance theory will they come to the some but not all interpretation i've highlighted relevance theory because for this theory the main body of evidence has been found in the three points of research the three articles that i display at the bottom of my slide the main body of evidence comes from the research done by bot and novak in 2004 the two other articles mentioned however also provide similar evidence the first point of evidence supporting relevance theory, so the pragmatic interpretation being one of extra effort, is that when participants get explicit instructions on how to interpret the underinformative sentences, when this instruction obliges them to interpret it in a logical fashion, they are faster. When the instruction says that they have to interpret it in a pragmatic fashion, so some but not all, they actually reason slower, respond slower, and make more mistakes. This is evidence that more cognitive resources are probably needed to make that extra interpretation. The second point of evidence, participants that consistently answer pragmatically due to their own way of answering, so without instructions, they also answer slower. This evidence is more ecologically valid because people don't get any instructions on how to respond to the underinformative sentences like some oaks are trees, they just have to respond from what they think is right themselves. And when they respond false, because they think the interpretation is to be made that some and not all oaks are trees. That's a pragmatic interpretation that will cause them to respond false. Well, they do that in a slower manner than when they respond logically. So when they say, yeah, because some means some and possibly all. This is again evidence for the interpretation that that extra scalar inference, that extra scalar implicature of but not all requires more cognitive effort. And the final point, the third point, very interesting from the fourth experiment in the Bot and Novak paper, when the participants were given more time to respond, so more cognitive resources were made readily available for them in their reasoning process, they actually used more pragmatic interpretations. So when more cognitive resources were available, they made more of those more cognitively demanding interpretations, which sounds logical of course. I do however feel obliged to end off with the notion that not all research supports relevance theory. Only some articles find evidence for it and some other articles find evidence for the default theories or the neo gricean theories as I talked about in the previous slides. And there you go. You learned what scalar inferences or scalar implicatures are. It's not really that well known of a phenomenon, but it is quite an interesting domain of research, especially if you're doing your thesis about it. Of course, you need to look into what it's all about. Our study is actually about spatial reasoning. And just to quickly summarize what that is about, to kind of adapt this topic right here to spatial reasoning, we talk about something being to the left of or to the right of something else. When you say the car is to the left of the bus, you might add the scalar inference that it's immediately to the left of the bus. That is an extra assumption that you make. I hope you can feel the similarities. We propose, or we hypothesize rather, that when we provide a cognitive load for the participants, so we make sure that their cognitive and working memory capacities are diminished, 
We hypothesize then that they will make less pragmatic interpretations, so they will think less in terms of things being immediately to the left of or immediately, immediately to the right of, and they will think more in logical fashion, something being somewhere to the left of or somewhere to the right of, but it doesn't have to be immediately to the left of the right of. All right, I hope that was interesting to you in some way, shape or form, and otherwise, thanks for watching either way. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.